Hi all, my name is Duke. I'm a knitwear designer under the name of Duke of Nikko. I live in Memphis, Tennessee, but I was born and raised in Japan, just outside of Tokyo. Today, I would like to give you a little introduction of Japan, where it is located in the world map, what are some of the biggest cities in Japan, and what their language is like. So where is Japan? Japan is a country in Asia. It is often considered far east of the world. Their closest neighbors are Korea, China, Taiwan, and Russia. It is also relatively close to some of the United States territories like Guam and Northern Mariana Islands. It's about 1,500 miles away. And also Hawaii is about 4,000 miles away. And Pacific Northwest, like Seattle, is about 5,000 miles away. Japan is an island country consisting of thousands and thousands of islands. But there are four main islands, starting from the north. This is Hokkaido. This is Honshu. This is Shikoku. And this is Kyushu. Okinawa is also a notable area consisting of many tropical islands. You may consider Japan a small country compared to US and Canada. Yes, it is tiny. I think both the US and Canada are about 25 times larger than Japan. But Japan is a very skinny and long country. It's roughly 1,500 miles long, north to south, as well as from east to west. So as you can imagine, Japan has a diverse range of climate, forestry, vegetation, and marine ecology. Japan is also very mountainous. Most of the inlands of the islands are mountains and valleys. The tallest mountain in Japan is Mount Fuji, and it's about uh, 12,000 feet or 3,700 meters high. Nature and seasons are very important in the Japanese culture. Can you think of major cities in Japan? You can probably name the biggest city in Japan, which is Tokyo. It's the capital of Japan, and most of the nation's government agencies and corporate headquarters are located in Tokyo. It is relatively a young city. It's been the nation's capital for only about 150 years. Osaka, is the second biggest city of Japan. It has a long, rich history because of its proximity to other historical cities. It is said to be the center of commerce and merchandising. It has a rich food culture, and a lot of comedians are from there as well. Not me. Close to Osaka is a historical city called Kyoto. If you get a chance to visit Japan, you should definitely go to Kyoto. There are many beautiful traditional temples and shrines that are built more than a thousand years ago. Many people there cherish traditions like textiles, clothing, pottery, performance arts, and so on. And for us knitters, it may be of interest that Amirisu, which is a Japanese publishing company known for their biannual knitting publications, 
is located in Kyoto. They have a local yarn store called Walnut. By the way, Ami means knitting and Risu means squirrels. And I guess that's why their uh, store is called Walnut. The third biggest city of Japan is Nagoya. Nagoya and its surrounding areas are known as the center of manufacturing. Do you know the biggest Japanese manufacturing company in this area? Toyota Motor Corporation, the world's biggest automobile manufacturer. Do you know what Toyota originally manufactured in the beginning? Weaving machines. Toyota is almost synonymous with innovation. You might have heard of the word Kaizen, which means continuous improvement, or Kanban, which is a lean supply chain workflows. Both terms were coined by Toyota. Another famous company in Nagoya is Brother, the manufacturer of sewing machines, fax machines, and printers. Many of you may own a Brother sewing machine, and now you know where it's from, Nagoya. Speaking of innovative companies, Noro Yarns and their main dyer, Eisaku Noro, is also based in Nagoya. Sapporo is the biggest city of the northern island of Hokkaido. To me, Hokkaido is like Alaska and California combined. It's huge in fishery and agriculture. So if you are a foodie, you should visit there. They have great seafood, vegetables, meats, and dairy product. It also got great ski resorts and all. It's sweater weather most of the year. Fukuoka is the biggest city of the southern island of Kyushu. It's also a great city for foodies, but it's not so much sweater weather compared to up north. And there's Naha city in Okinawa. Area-wise, Okinawa is very tiny. I think it's about 0.1% of Japan's land. But Okinawa is home to many Japanese Americans and also U.S. military bases have a huge presence in Okinawa. Let's shift gears and talk about language. You may have noticed, but I love knitting words. I especially enjoy knitting Japanese characters because I think they are unique and aesthetically beautiful. So way back when, about 1500 years ago, Japan did not have a writing system, but they started having a relationship with, with their biggest neighbor, China, and soon they adopted the writing system that Chinese people had. That is kanji, and kanji little literally means characters of China. But Chinese language and Japanese language were very different grammatically and phonetically. So the Japanese people tweaked some of the Chinese characters and made two unique alphabet systems. That's hiragana and katakana. The first word I'm going to talk about is um, Nippon, which means Japan. They say that the word Japan comes from China. Uh, from China's perspective, um, Japan is to the east. So they thought uh, it's the country when the root of the sun is or the, where the sun rises. And the word Japan, or Nihon, consists of two characters, 
first character, me, uh, is, means sun, and this shape is, uh, comes from the shape of the sun, kind of round with the core. Uh, and the second character is hon, or it means root, and it comes from uh, a big tree, uh, the root area of the tree. tree. Uh, this is a headband design um, and it uses stranded knitting so it's not reversible. The wrong side is just uh, floats of yellow yarn. I made a series of hat designs using four different characters representing nature. So the first character is Yama and it means mountain. And as you can see from the shape of the character, it represents uh, three tiers of mountain. And the second character is Kawa, or it means river. And again, if you look at the shape of the character, it's like a stream of uh, water flowing through. And the third character is a little bit more complicated than others, but it's kusa, and it means grass. And it re represents, um, you know, leaves or, or plants growing. Um, and there's a sun, the character sun in the middle. So I guess um, those green, green, is uh, photosynthesizing or something. And the last word is ki, or it means tree. And you see the uh, strong uh, bark of tree trunk coming up, and also uh, some uh, branches or leaves coming up from the uh, trunk. And the hat series uh, are all reversible. If you look at the design, all the characters are, are symmetric, um, except for the word river. There's a little bit of asymmetry going on, but other characters, uh, everything is symmetric. So it's very easy to make it reversible. So the next word is sara, or it means dish, but as you can see, it's also straightforward. There's a dish, and there's some kind of food on, on the dish, and that's how this character represents. Again, the word sara is also a symmetric character, so this is made into a reversible dishcloth using double knitting or double, double fabric. I also made a series of poster designs uh, using characters related to drinks. The first one is cha, or it means tea, and it's this one. Um, visualizes the tea leaves and agricultural tool to prune the tea leaves. So the word cha is symmetric. So it's reversible. Next one is mizu and sake. And it's actually a reversible coaster with different designs on each side. So this side is mizu or water. And as you can see, it's kind of drips of water in different directions. Uh, so that's water. And sake uh, is this one. It has a uh, part of uh, mizu components. So those are uh, three drips of water splashing. And the part on the right represents like a sake uh, carafe or, or, or bottle. And sake means 
sake or alcohol. Next one is on and rei, which means hot and cold. And this is also a non-mirror reversible design. One side says hot and the other side says cold. So the word for hot is on. Um, again, you see the splash of water on the left side. And on the right side, you see the sun. Uh, and and the dish um, combined. So those three components combined, it represents the word hot. And lay uh, cold, it's uh, as like um, similar to water, but this represents ice or ice cubes, or ice, uh, what do you call it? Ice sticks. <laughs> and the one on the right side, I couldn't really, I didn't really know what it meant, so I Googled it, and it means like uh, uh, the top part is a crown, and the bottom part is a person kind of kneeling to the crown, so, this the combination of these components represents like something divine cold clear divine thing and there you have it so i talked about japan uh from the perspective of where it is what uh, cities are in japan and what their language is like and that was my introduction of Japan and Japanese language. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy knitting!